Well, this is a video I'm shooting on Boxing Day. It was going to be live, but uh, I guess there's just a little bit too much technical information I want to look at, so I'm deciding uh, that live probably isn't the best way to go about it. But it is going to be more or less a stream of consciousness video, like my live videos, so uh, let's get started. Um, first off, um, usually in my live videos I show new things that showed up, so... I will do that. Um, we already know about the side buster. We'll be talking about that real soon. Um, but this one recently showed up here. Uh, I'm sure you all saw my Stoneworks knives already. Uh, so this should not be that big of a surprise. The RR918, which is the original trapper in the Stoneworks series. Um, if you notice, it looks very much like this other RR918 that I have. The difference is, this is the first release one, so it is lacking that annoying blade edge that they decided to put on in subsequent releases. Um, so I have a sneaking suspicion that this one here might be going out the door in a giveaway in the future. Uh, because really all I wanted was the RR918 uh, trapper without the blade edge. And now that I have it, this one might be going somewhere else to a different home. In any case, let's move on to uh, a little bit more of what the point of this video is. And as you can probably tell, there's a lot of wood on the table. And that's what this video is going to be talking about. Wooden knives. Now, uh, before I get started... What this video was originally going to be was a uh, a talk about uh, my New Year's resolution for next year. But um, there is an um, open tag going around now, which is called Past, Present, Future, which basically uh, knife collectors are supposed to take a look at what they were doing in the past, where they are now in the uh, hobby, and where they plan on going in the future. And I had already kind of worked out a third of that with my uh, with my New Year's resolution for next year. Uh, so I will be doing another video on that instead of doing my live video today, just focusing on the uh, future of, uh, or my future in knife collecting for the year 2020. But, this video is a little bit of a hint on where I'm going at in 2020 because as you can tell there's a lot of knives here with wood handles and what I want to talk to you about is um, the various kinds of wood that you find on knife handles and I'm going to start off with a uh, a type of wood that really isn't a wood and a lot of people uh, give it a bad rap and they really shouldn't because it actually is a pretty solid uh, handle material for knives and that's packa wood and if you wonder where's the packa tree well there is no such thing as a packa tree and um, there's no such thing as packa wood in nature either this is a man-made material uh, but it is a very strong man-made material if it is done correctly and more to the point, you will find pack of wood on not only low-end budget knives, but you will also find it on some uh, medium-range uh, knives as well as some high-end knives, too. Uh, because pack of wood is really not that bad of stuff. Uh, now, pack of wood is basically wood veneers that have been mixed in with a phenolic uh, thermoplastic resin, and then they are pressed together and then they are heated until they are basically fused into a new kind of material. Um, and that material can be named all sorts of things. But the thing to remember about pack of wood is that it is basically thin sheets of wood and tons of thermoplastic resin uh, that have been pressed together with heat and pressure until it is just fused together as one piece and then it can be uh, cut, it can be molded and all sorts of things. And uh, we see some peck of wood right here on this uh, Boy Scout knife out of China. Um, and you see 
what you have here is the wonderful grain in there, but really that isn't the grain. That is the various layers of the wood. Um, another name for pack of wood is diamond wood. Now, if you're familiar with buck knives, you know they use diamond wood. Well, that's really just pack of wood. Another name for it, which a lot of people have heard, is frost wood. And that basically is the same thing as pack of wood. Basically what uh, Jim Frost did was he dyed the wood various colors and then using all those, uh, f all that phenolic uh, thermoplastic resin, pressed it all together until you sanded it down and then you come up with various colors of wood all together and uh, into a new knife handle. So you obviously would never find a wood like this in nature, but it is just one solid piece because of all that thermoplastic resin mixed in with the wood. Uh, so there's another version of pack of wood, um, though now it is called frost wood. That is uh, what Jim Frost calls it. Uh, other people call it color wood. Uh, as this is not a knife by Frost, and this Baron's son, uh, Barlow, is not a knife by Frost, this is known as color wood, but it looks very much like what you would see with uh, the Jim Frost frost wood material. Um, you also see here another knife. This is a very low-end uh, knife by right edge, uh, and you see that it looks really nice, um, and... It's really just pack of wood, uh, even though the person selling it was saying it's mahogany. And that's one of the things that uh, you have to be very careful with. Uh, you'll hear people call uh, pack of wood all sorts of names like silver wood uh, and all sorts of other names. And sometimes they just get it completely wrong because it looks like a mahogany color. They say it's mahogany. Now, this could actually be mahogany because you could take thin veneers of mahogany, press it together, and make it into a pack of wood. Uh, same thing with anything else, too. Any kind of wood can be used as a pack of wood. But uh, a low-end budget knife, this knife costs 7 bucks. They're not going to be putting a mahogany handle on there regardless of what they say. So you can probably guess that this is probably a pine or something. But because of all the uh, thermoplastic resin mixed in with the wood, it is going to be a solid material and it is not going to crack or chip or anything. And most likely it won't fade or anything. So pack of wood is actually a good material for a knife handle, even though it is not a true wood. Uh, but you will run into quite a bit of pack of wood out there. Now let's look at another material. And this one is burl wood. This is on a Rough Rider knife. This is one of the first fixed blade Rough Riders I ever bought. And you can tell I've used it quite a bit because I really like this knife. And I like the burl wood handle on it. Um, what is burl wood? Uh, it's also sometimes called root wood or root wood, whatever way you want to call it. It's basically a gnarly piece of wood um, that is comes from kind of... Um, either the root of a tree or some kind of gnarled up branch that was uh, deformed because of, uh, of some kind of interruption in the growth of the wood. And so instead of having a regular pattern, it is all sorts of muted and blotted and going in all sorts of different directions. And so it really looks good. And also it tends to be denser than the normal wood. Um, this one is nondescript. They don't say what kind of wood it is from. So you can assume that it could be any kind of tree. Certain trees are more susceptible to having uh, uh, a burl type wood, one of them being maple. So you'll hear a lot about curly maple. Curly maple is a type of burl wood. Another one is uh, desert ironwood. Desert ironwood tends to be a type of... Uh, of uh, burl wood also in that it usually does not have distinct lines running through it sometimes it will but um, it looks nice and it's usually a little denser than regular wood regardless of where it came from um, often what will happen with um, 
burl wood also is it will also be impregnated with uh, some kind of stabilizing agent such as a uh, thermoplastic or something like that to uh, fill in the uh, gaps and the voids and everything and also to add strength to it. So burl wood is another one of those woods that is kind of interesting and you're going to find it on everything from low end knives to high end knives and you can almost uh, guarantee I can almost guarantee you that if you're paying uh 12 14 15 dollars on the knife uh chances are it is going to be a lower grade of burl wood but even a low grade burl wood looks good and is pretty solid I been carrying this knife and using it for 10 years and the handle is still as good as it always was uh, and it feels good in the hand this is like I said the uh, Rough Rider 844 um, let's move on to another one that is very much related to burl wood and that is desert ironwood I've only got one knife in it but you can see it looks very much like burl wood because it is a type of uh, burl wood. The difference though is desert ironwood comes from a specific plant um, or a, well, the ironwood, desert ironwood uh, bush or desert ironwood tree, which is located in um, northern Mexico and Sonora, Arizona, that in that region. And so it has a very um, limited range. Um, there's quite a bit of, of it there it is a very dense, very heavy wood, kind of hard to work with. And usually you see it in small pieces like this because of uh, the bush itself is not that big. Um, but it is a um, one of the uh, materials that is pretty much highly prized uh, with knife makers. So a lot of knife makers like to use desert iron wood. But again, I mean, this is on a doctor's knife uh, by Schrade. And I paid like uh, $12 for it. So you can guess that this is a lower quality desert ironwood than what you're going to find on a more high-end knife that would be out of, say, uh, Case or Great Eastern Cutlery or some um, uh, knife maker who is making his own knife. So, But you can see that even the low-end desert ironwood has a wonderful uh, texture to it, a wonderful color, and it looks kind of cool. So desert iron wood is another uh, fabulous material for wooden handles for knives. Um, one that we're all familiar with is beech. And Opinel uses beech. So does um, um, Rapala. Rapala usually uses beech in its knife handles. And this is a hardwood. It's used uh, extensively in Europe for, for knife handles, especially, like I said, by Opinel and also by, um, by Rapala or Martinini. And um, what it is, is it's, it's very good wood. It's hard. It's wear resistant, um, but it's easy to carve and everything else. And um, it grows quickly, so that's why uh, they use it. Uh, it's very sustainable wood. Uh, so beech wood, and you notice it's a nice blonde color. It's just one of those materials that a lot of people uh, use in, uh, in handle materials, especially some companies. They almost use it exclusively. So um, I don't know what else to say about beech wood. I mean, it's very popular and it's around. It's kind of like the ash and the walnut of European knives. You'll see a lot of walnut, ash, uh, being used in um, in the United States more or less, uh, especially walnut. Walnut's used quite a bit in the United States in knife handles and better knife handles uh, if they're not using something like pack of wood. But uh, beech is the uh, seems like the preferred wood in Europe. Let's move on to my three favorite here. Okay, I've got a few knives with this. I'm only going to show this one and I'm going to compare it to another one. This is known as zebra wood. This is the Rough Rider Ulu Skinner RR776. Uh, I've got a few knives with uh, zebra wood, like I mentioned. And I really like zebra wood. It, uh, it is a, another very heavy, very dense wood coming out of Africa. Um, and if you notice, you have definitive lines running through it. You can really see the grain. The grain just kind of pops in it. 
uh, and almost to the point where here's another knife back here. Now this knife I believe is just using like a, like a beech wood or something. But if you notice, it also has the lines running through it. But that's because what they've done is they have cross cut the wood so that you see these lines running in there. Uh, but this is actually the face of the wood. This is not cross cut. This is actually the grain of the wood. And um, that's really what makes a uh, zebra wood look great. But more importantly, it's one of these woods that it, because of it being heavy and dense, uh, it doesn't chip a lot. It's it's a very good, strong wood for a knife handle. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about it breaking or anything of that nature. Um, and uh, just looks really nice. So zebra wood is one of my definite favorite woods and uh, I like to uh, grab knives that have zebra wood handles. I will take that over like a beech or an ash or a walnut or something simply because it has a lot of character to it. Um, I like um, zebra wood also better than burl wood because it's um it just seems more natural and you and it's a, a defined wood i mean if they tell you it's desert iron wood then you know what kind of uh wood you have but burl wood it can be any number of woods unless they specify what that wood is but with zebra wood you know it's zebra wood again there's um uh different uh levels of quality in zebra wood so on a knife like this one that cost about 15 bucks at the time. Um, this is not the highest quality zebra wood, but uh, you will see it uh, even at, at that level. It, it still has a really nice character to it, even for a $15 knife. Looks uh, much better than what you would find with a pack of wood handle. Now next up is Babinga. Now this is on a uh, open L. Now what babinga is is it is a um, it's also known as African rosewood. This is another very heavy, very dense wood, um, so, so it's very tightly made. It's also an oily wood that uh, is uh, not prone to rotting or anything else. Uh, insects leave it alone and everything else. So babinga is a really good wood for all sorts of things, but it really looks good on a knife. Come on, let's get over there. And that's why I like to buy Babinga. Uh, babinga is also a really good wood to use around water because it sheds water. It is very much water resistant, uh, which explains why um, Meyer ten tends to use uh, Babinga wood in a lot of its nautical knives. And this one. Notice this is Babinga wood on an open L. Now look at the the character on this babinga wood in the Meyerchen knife, which uh, these go for around sixty or seventy dollars versus a twenty dollar knife. You can see there's a definitive difference in the quality of the babinga wood. Um, and I should take this off someday so you can see the backside, but you see the the character and the lines and everything. Should have brought out my bigger one. Because, uh, you can even see more of the wood but babinga is just a really good wood for maritime use and uh, any kind of hard use knife uh, it handles well it takes abuse um, and you can definitely work on it it's it's good for carving and everything else um, and here's a, an example of Another Babinga knife I have. This is by R. Murphy. It was their Fisherman Pal. Now this wood did not come with the hole drilled in there. I actually drilled the hole through there. And drilling a hole through this thing uh, using a uh, carbon steel bit um, took almost 20 minutes. And I went through two drill bits because that's how heavy and dense the wood was. It just did a number on the drill bit because the wood is also a little bit waxy on the inside uh, and that's why it sheds water and everything. But you can see here, I, this uh, the fish on there, I carved that into there myself and, and did a, the little bit of painting. So, uh, you know, it's just good wood, nice character to it. And like I said, it's called um, 
African rosewood. Now rosewood actually comes from the Amazon and here is some uh, Bolivian rosewood. You can see why they call it the same. This is my uh, R. Murphy, uh, what do they call it? Charleston uh, oyster shucker. You can see the lines in there and what rosewood looks like. This is true rosewood versus your uh, uh, African rosewood or babinga. Uh, babinga is probably my second favorite wood. I really like babinga. It's a very good wood. Um, and if you're looking for a good quality knife handle, babinga is a way to go. Um, let's look at my number one favorite in the wood handles. I would like to say this is probably the best wood to make a knife handle out of, but it's not. Uh, Babinga is a better wood. I think uh, zebra wood is a better wood, and even uh, desert iron wood is a better wood. But I just like uh, olive wood. I like the color of it, and uh, I love the historical significance of olive wood. It's a very popular wood. It's been around for a long time and it's been used in knife handles for centuries. And that's really why I like olive wood so much. It's not as heavy, it's not as dense as you will find in like a babinga or a um, um, uh, told you this is stream of conscious, uh, desert ironwood or something like that. Matter of fact, it's not going to hold up probably as well as a, a higher end um, um, a pack of wood even, but it's got a lot of nice character to it. Does come in different shades, and one of the things with olive wood is it is going to react with the uh, moisture and uh, oils in your skin, so it will darken over time. Of course, you could just lightly sand it and uh, lighten it up a bit. Um, this is one of the knives that I just recently picked up. It's uh, by Falcone or Falcon out of uh, Italy, um, and it's an Italian-made stiletto. This is also a Falcon uh, stiletto. This is a fishtail one. Um, notice how this one has been rounded off. I did that myself. And I will probably do the same thing with this one eventually. But first, I'm going to review this one uh, as is. But olive wood is definitely probably my favorite. And you'll probably see a lot more olive wood showing up in the near future. Um, you can see here, it's just got a lot of character to it. Um, uh, you can uh, polish it. You can oil it. There's all sorts of things you can do to really get olive wood to look a whole lot nicer, too. Um, of course, you can do that with any other wood. But um, there you have it, uh, a few different woods that I kind of like. And uh, and you'll probably be seeing a little bit more in wood in the future. But hopefully this uh, video wasn't too boring or uh, a waste of time for you. But um, trying to... So many people talk about different blade steels and everything. A lot of people seem to just ignore the uh, handle materials out there. And, uh, and when it comes to wood, there's a lot of wood out there. And there's quality wood and there's not so quality wood. And uh, I thought maybe if I talked a little bit about some of the wood handles that I have and why I'm picking them, it'll help you understand uh, uh, what kind of wood to be looking for when you're looking for a knife. Because... Uh, even if they just say pack of wood, some of it's good, some of it's bad. Uh, but now you kind of know what they mean by beach and um, babinga, desert ironwood, burl, olive wood, so on and so forth. In any case, I'm going to wrap it up now. And uh, like I said, it was kind of a stream of conscious thing. I'm going to put this all together and we'll see how it goes. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.